Hello and welcome to Slightly Nostalgic. My name is Griff and we have watched Avatar The Last Airbender Season 1 Episode 7, The Winter Solstice Part 1, The Spirit World. That is a long intro. I'm so glad I got through it all. So this is our first two-parter episode and it's a really good one. At this point in the recording I actually haven't watched the second part but I really liked this first part which is rare for me for a two-parter episode thing. I usually don't care much about the first one. You know, all the big exciting stuff is usually in the second half, but this was a good one. We got some really good Zuko and Iroh stuff this episode. So this is the episode where an evil forest spirit is haunting this village, basically. It's kidnapping people every night, and they want Aang to help them because he's supposed to have a connection to the spirit world, but he doesn't remember how. But the more interesting part of this episode for me is what's going on with Zuko and Iroh. Iroh gets kidnapped by Earthbenders, and Zuko has to track him down, and there's a big fight, and it's really awesome. But going back to what Aang and his friends are up to first here, Aang keeps going back and forth between being like this carefree, happy-go-lucky kid, and suddenly feeling the weight of the responsibility that he has as the avatar and it just every time i think okay now he's going to start taking things seriously he goes off on this other tangent where he's like being goofy and not really thinking about things again it's like he's like he just hasn't he can't seem to learn that lesson for good that like you need to focus on what you're doing here and it's really important that you learn how to do everything that you're supposed to do because when you screw up, bad things happen to good people. Also, stop telling everyone you're the Avatar. What's the deal with that? But anyway, back over on the other side with Zuko and Iroh, we get some interesting tidbits about Iroh's backstory here. The Earthbender guards call him the Great Dragon of the West, and they say he was a once great general. They say he laid siege to Ba Sing Se. But you get the sense that now he's kind of outcasted, especially since they called him the once great general. We get the sense that maybe he lost some battles or he did something. Maybe it was because he sided with Zuko and went off with Zuko when he got outcasted. We really don't know exactly what's going on here. But it's interesting that he used to be kind of a big deal. Also, a little tidbit about Earthbender guards, they ride ostriches, okay? But anyway, it's interesting that, I don't know about anybody else, but I was definitely rooting for Zuko and Iroh during this whole storyline where Iroh's getting kidnapped and Zuko's looking for him. I definitely wanted Zuko to find him and, and free him and maybe not kill the Earthbenders because they're still technically good guys. But it's interesting that I sided with them, and I think the show wants you to side with them, even though, I mean, this is the villain. These are the bad guys of the story. They, we've shown they're getting a little more and more sympathetic, but, like, the Earthbenders are still the good guys in this situation. And it would definitely be better for our main characters if Iroh and Zuko were both captured. If they had lost the fight, it would have been better for our heroes. So it's interesting the way they're doing this, doing this. And they didn't even resort to like making the Earthbender guards just huge jerks or like mistreating Iroh or anything like that. I mean, they do, they are planning at one point to crush his hands with a rock, but that was only after he like severely burned one of them and tried to escape and had tricked them and things like that. Like, they weren't, they weren't mean to him before. They were kind of taunting him a little bit, but he did lay siege to their city, so. And then, like I said, we get a really cool fight at the end where Iroh is fighting with chains and Zuko's doing his flippy, twirly, firebending stuff and they're fighting the Earthbenders. And there's this awesome moment where the Earthbenders say, you're clearly outnumbered, and Iroh goes, that's true, but you are clearly outmatched. And then the fight starts and they win and it's great. So that's pretty much all I have for this episode. I feel like I didn't really talk much about the main storyline, but that just didn't really interest me nearly as much as what was going on with Zuko and Iroh, so yeah, whatever. Be sure to watch the next episode if you're following along, which is The Winter Solstice Part 2, Avatar Roku. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Okay, bye.